Often called the lungs of the Earth, the Amazon rainforest spans nine countries, but about 60% lies in Brazil. Tropical rainforests are home to the largest and the smallest, the loudest and the quietest of all land animals, as well as some of the most dangerous, most beautiful, most endearing, and strangest looking animals on Earth. The Amazon is home to more species of plants and animals than any other terrestrial ecosystem on the planet. Perhaps 30% of the world's species are found there. Its biodiversity is astounding. A single bush in the Amazon may have more species of ants than the entire British Isles, while a single hectare of forest may have more than 500 species of trees, and a single park can have more than 1,400 butterfly species. Competition for survival is fierce. This may explain why over millions of years of evolution so many highly adapted species have evolved in this biome. Tigers are the largest members of the cat family and are instantly recognizable thanks to their striking orange and black stripes. These apex predators are capable of taking down prey of all sizes, from rodents to elephant calves, fiery and imposing. Aggressive and powerful, tigers have aroused fascination in humans through millennia, but they have also experienced threats in their natural environment as a result of human activities. The tigers have anatomy with over 600 muscles and a strong bone structure that makes them apex predators in their natural habitat. They evolved from their ancestors for almost 2 million years, continuously adapting to their environment. All tigers are native to Asia and belong to a single species Panthera tigris, which has six subspecies. Siberian tiger, Bengal tiger, Malayan tiger, Indochinese tiger, South China tiger, and Sumatran tiger. Body size and morphology vary considerably among subspecies of tigers. Siberian tigers, also known as Amur tigers, are the largest. Male Siberian tigers can grow to 3.7 meters or 12.1 feet and weigh over 423 kilograms or 932 pounds. Male Indochinese tigers, though smaller than Siberian tigers in body size at 2.8 meters or 9.2 feet in length and 195 kilograms or 430 pounds, have the longest skull of all tiger subspecies. Sumatran tigers are the smallest living subspecies. Male Sumatran tigers measure 2.3 meters or 7.5 feet and weigh 136 kilograms or 300 pounds. Tigers have short, thick necks, broad shoulders, and massive forelimbs, ideal for grappling with prey while holding on with long retractable claws and broad forepaws. A tiger's tongue is covered with hard papillae to scrape the flesh off the bones of prey. Tigers are carnivores and can capture and eat large mammals. Deer, antelope, buffalo, and wild boar are some of the prey of tigers. They also eat monkeys, sloth bears, and leopards. Tigers have even been known to eat crocodiles. Tigers use one of two tactics when they get close enough to kill. Small animals, weighing less than half the body weight of the tiger, are killed by a bite to the back of the neck. The canines are inserted between the neck vertebrae, forcing them apart and breaking the spinal cord. For larger animals, a bite to the throat is used to crush the animal's trachea and suffocate it. The throat bite is the safer killing tactic because it minimizes any physical assault the tiger may receive while trying to kill its prey. After the prey is taken to cover, tigers feed first on the buttocks using the carnassials to rip open the carcass. As the tiger progresses, it opens the body cavity and removes the stomach. Not all of the prey is eaten. Some parts are rejected. Prey are usually dragged to cover and can be left there and revisited over several days. Although tigers are extremely efficient hunters, they don't always make the kill as you would expect them to. When they can sneak up on the prey, they only have a few seconds to pounce and kill them by biting them in the neck area. Tigers are solitary. The only long-term relationship is between a mother and her offspring. They are most active at night, when their wild ungulate prey are most active, although they can be active at any time of the day. Tigers prefer to hunt in dense vegetation and along routes where they can move quietly. In snow, they select routes on frozen riverbeds, 
and paths made by ungulates or anywhere else that has a reduced snow depth. Tigers have tremendous leaping ability, being able to leap from 8 to 10 meters. Leaps of half that distance are more typical. They are excellent swimmers, and water doesn't usually act as a barrier to their movement. Tigers are also excellent climbers, using their retractable claws and powerful legs. The IUCN categorizes tigers as endangered and lists illegal poaching as the main threat to the species. Tigers are poached so their body parts and fur can be sold as part of the illegal wildlife trade. Tiger bones are used in traditional Asian medicines, and similar markets seek tiger skin, teeth, and other parts. In addition to the threat of poaching, tiger habitat is being converted into agriculture or human settlements and commercially logged. Tiger attacks on humans and livestock also bring the cat into conflict with people who kill them in retaliation. As everybody knows, tigers are extremely strong animals and have amazing qualities, but can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? First, we need to better understand if tigers would adapt to the Amazon rainforest. There are key elements that differentiate Amazon from the other environments where tigers once roamed. Tigers like floodplains, grasslands, and forests ranging from temperate to tropical, but they will often stay in forests classified as moist or dry, not rainforests. Many of the tiger reserves with the highest density and best management status, such as Bandofgar and Corbett, have large expanses of moist, dense deciduous forests as well as streams and grasslands. These areas are not rainy enough to be considered rainforests. Many tiger reserves in India are found in upland regions, like the Western Ghats. The habitats in which tigers are found are quite varied, but they are primarily moist or dry forests. However, there are sections of both the Western Ghats and the Sundarbans that may be classified as rainforests, and it would surprise me if tiger habitats did not intersect with these areas. South America, except the Andes Llamas, does not have large herds of herbivores to hunt. Like Asia, llamas are close relatives to camels. Not too far in history, both camels and tigers were widespread in Asia, and camels were common prey for both tigers and Asiatic lions. The situation in the Amazon rainforest is even worse. There are simply no herds, except for wild pigs, and the herbivores there adapted to smaller sizes compared to other regions. Even the jaguar there is smaller than it bothers from Pantanal. Deers in the Amazon do not live in herds and are mostly the size of goats. Even the canids there are smaller and live in smaller groups than their counterparts in the world. Due to this scenario, the jaguar, the apex predator there, lives on a great variety of animals, from the large tapirs to small everything. Having a menu with more than 100 different prey species, they even fish and prey on alligators, not to mention they break giant river turtle shells in one bite, as they are very well adapted. It would not be an easy life for tigers. All larger cats disappeared from South America together with extinct megafauna for a reason. Jaguar size is the best force and size combo nature came with. Siberian and most Bengal tigers would find Amazon to be too dense and too wet for their liking. But tigers are highly adaptive animals. For example, Sundurban tigers would probably do just fine in the Amazon. They live in the mangroves, which are crisscrossed by so many rivers, smaller in size, and are used to live on smaller prey. They are still Bengal tigers genetically, but are quite different in nature and physique from the tigers of the rest of the subcontinent. However, introducing Sundurban tigers in the Amazon would be destructive for the jaguars as the tigers would directly compete with them for food and territory. Though these tigers are somewhat smaller than others, they are still significantly bigger than jaguars. They are also more aggressive than tigers from any other region. The hippopotamus is native to Africa. There are two species of hippo, the common hippo and the pygmy hippo. The common hippo is an amphibious mammal spending much of the day in the water. It is native to sub-Saharan Africa and found in large numbers in East Africa. They come out at night to forage grasses on dry land, feeding for five or six hours at a time. In comparison, 
The pygmy hippo spends the majority of its time on land, in the swamps and forests of West Africa. This much smaller species forages for leaves, roots, and fruits on the forest floor, and can even stand on its hind legs to reach higher vegetation. The common hippo can grow up to 5 meters long, or 16.4 feet, and weigh 4 tons. This is comparable to the white rhino in size and weight. They are well adapted to their aquatic life. They can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes underwater. Their eyes, ears, and nostrils close in the water. They are located high up on their head, so that the rest of their body can remain submerged, often sleeping like this for up to 16 hours a day. There is debate as to whether hippos can actually swim. Underwater footage shows hippos walking along the bottom of rivers and lakes, but some question whether they would be able to do that to have reached some of the islands they inhabit. Despite having partly webbed feet, the hippo's body form is not conducive to swimming. It seems that the islands they inhabit were once connected to the mainland during the Pleistocene. Therefore, analysis of their aquatic movements has shown that they effectively gallop underwater, pushing off from the substrate and gliding through the water. Hippos can move at 5 miles per hour underwater, but can run on land up to 19 miles per hour. Getting caught in the crossfire of one of these impressive beasts would be very unfortunate. It is estimated that about 500 people are killed by hippos every year. The common hippos are aggressive and territorial when in the water. Males defend territories for mating rights, but not for food. Female hippos are protective of their young and highly aggressive towards the end of their gestation period and once their calf has been born. Common hippo males live in bachelor groups, whilst females form bonds with their daughters. Female hippos sometimes care for each other's young, and baby hippos spend a great deal of time playing with one another. Although common hippos are often seen in large groups together, they are not necessarily in a tight social bond with the other hippos in that group. The lifespan of these animals in the wild is 30 to 35 years, and females reach maturity at approximately 8 years of age. The pygmy hippo, in contrast, is listed as critically endangered. There are thought to be less than 3,000 individuals left in the wild. They are considerably smaller than common hippos, weighing less than 300 kilograms. They have smaller bodies and smaller heads, which are adapted for weaving through the dense jungle foliage. They also have longer legs, and their feet are less webbed than the common hippo, owing to the greater amount of time they spend on the land. Pygmy hippos are not sociable animals like their larger cousins and only interact with one another during the mating season. Of course, mothers and their young can spend a great deal of time together. Calves are weaned from their mothers at around 8 months old. And, although they reach sexual maturity between 3 and 5 years old, the young can remain with their mothers for up to 8 years. The pygmy hippo prefers wet vegetation close to rivers. They spend a lot of their time in swamps and swallows, often lying near rivers and sleeping in burrows. They can still hold their breath underwater for many minutes and often dive to feed on underwater vegetation. But they spend more of their time on land than the common hippo, foraging the forest floor or lying near the riverbanks, sheltering from the sun. Massive deforestation has led to the pygmy hippo's demise through loss of habitat. About 80% of the original forest in West Africa has been destroyed. The hippos are also threatened by poaching. Like their cousins, the pygmy hippo can also be aggressive. They are not known to be territorial, but they will attack intruders in their environment if they feel threatened. They open their mouth wide and a big yawn displaying their huge canines as a threat. The question here today is, could hippos survive in the Amazon? There are similarities between the habitat of the Amazon and that inhabited by the hippo. The Amazon has an abundance of waterways that would be suited to the common hippopotamus. Some large savannas and grasslands would provide abundant forage. Slow-moving rivers with shallow pools and nearby vegetation are ideal for this species of hippo. The dense, tropical forest, however, would be more suited to the pygmy hippo. Their body shape and structure are more conducive to dense vegetation, and they enjoy the hidden wallows and swamps within the forest. 
both species of hippo could withstand the climatic conditions of the Amazon and would be well adapted to the average temperature found there. The Amazon has a very consistent year-round climate without distinct seasons. The temperature remains around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. Liberia in West Africa is home to the pygmy hippo and has a tropical climate with temperatures similar to that of the Amazon. In many parts of sub-Saharan Africa, however, there are distinct seasons and temperatures can dip significantly during the winter. But the common hippo thrives in the warmer months and would do well in the Amazonian temperatures. Interestingly, there are already a small number of hippos living within the Amazon. In the 1980s, the infamous drug lord, Pablo Escobar, illegally imported four hippos as pets. They remained in his garden, adding to the menagerie that he built over the years. Following his death in 1993, instead of being captured and relocated, authorities left the hippos alone. There are now 130 hippos, all descended from Escobar's original four. They have clearly thrived in the region, owing to the abundant food available, favorable climate and habitat, and lack of natural predators. Projections show that there could be as many as 400 of them by 2030. Many locals are not opposed to the hippo's existence, but authorities are to declare them an invasive species. Some attacks on humans have already been reported locally. In Africa, as human populations grow, there is often conflict between people and hippos. Farmland encroaching onto hippo grazing lands and river access points is most often the reason for these conflicts. Hippos can raid crops and cause devastating losses for farmers and local communities. The economic impact of raiding hippos can be huge and often results in hippo relocation or culling. The introduction of such a destructive herbivore can cause significant upset amongst the people living within and around the Amazon rainforest. Furthermore, the delicate ecological balance within the Amazonian rainforest could be massively disrupted by the presence of the hippopotamus. From their foraging behavior to the large quantities of dung they release into the rivers and waterways, hippos are likely to change the ecology of the region. It has been reported in Kenya that some rivers and lakes are starved of oxygen. This significantly damages the aquatic biodiversity, including important fish species. This is due to the immense amount of hippo dung excreted into the water, feeding the microbes that rob the water of oxygen. With no natural predators, the hippo could outcompete many other species. In the water, they could come into conflict with the river-dwelling manatee, and on land, they would compete for herbaceous foods with the likes of the capybara and tapirs. In fact, the habitat and feeding behavior of both the capybara and the tapir is not so dissimilar from the hippo. Enjoying time both in and out of the water, these semi-aquatic mammals feed on vegetation along the rivers and within the forest. So, in answer to the question, could hippos survive in the Amazon? Yes, they could. Not only would they survive, they would probably thrive. The lion is one of the largest, strongest, and most powerful felines in the world, second only in size to the Siberian tiger. They are the largest cats on the African continent. While most big cats are solitary hunters, lions are incredibly sociable animals that live together in family groups called prides. Lions have strong, compact bodies and powerful forelegs, teeth, and jaws for pulling down and killing prey. Their coats are yellow gold, and adult males have shaggy manes that range in color from blonde to reddish brown to black. The length and color of a lion's mane are likely determined by age, genetics, and hormones. Young lions have light spotting on their coats that disappears as they grow. A full-grown male is about 1.8 to 2.1 meters or 6 to 7 feet long, excluding the 1 meter tail. He stands about 1.2 meters high at the shoulder and weighs 170 to 230 kilograms or 370 to 500 pounds. The female, or lioness, is smaller, with a body length of 1.5 meters and a shoulder height of 0.9 to 1.1 meters and a weight of 120 to 180 kilograms. Historically, 
lions would have been found throughout much of Africa and even in parts of Europe and Asia as well. Today, however, they have been pushed into more isolated pockets of their once vast natural range, with the remaining African lion population now only found in countries in sub-Saharan Africa. There is also still a small population of Asiatic lions found inhabiting a remote part of the Gir Forest in India. Despite their dwindling numbers, lions are actually incredibly adaptable animals that can and will inhabit very dry climates as they get most of the moisture they need from their food. They prefer areas of open woodland, scrub, and long grasslands where there is not only plenty over cover but also a wide variety of prey. They are only not found in areas of rainforest or far into deserts. Lions are unique among cats in that they live in a group or pride. The members of a pride typically spend the day in several scattered groups that may unite to hunt or share a meal. A pride consists of several generations of lionesses, some of which are related, a smaller number of breeding males and their cubs. The group may consist of as few as four or as many as 37 members, but about 15 is the average size. Each pride has a well-defined territory consisting of a core area that is strictly defended against intruding lions and a fringe area where some overlap is tolerated. There are several competing evolutionary explanations for why lions form groups. Large body size and high density of their main prey probably make group life more efficient for females in terms of energy expenditure. Groups of females, for example, hunt more effectively and are better able to defend cubs against infanticidal males and their hunting territory against other females. The relative importance of these factors is debated and it is not clear which was responsible for the establishment of group life and which are secondary benefits. Lions prey on a wide variety of animals ranging in size from rodents and baboons to cape buffalo and hippopotamuses, but they predominantly hunt medium to large sized hoofed animals such as wildebeests, zebras, and antelopes. Prey preferences vary geographically as well as between neighboring prides. Lions are known to take elephants and giraffes, but only if the individual is young or especially sick. They readily eat any meat they can find including carrion and fresh kills that they scavenge or forcefully steal from hyenas, cheetahs, or wild dogs. Lionesses living in open savanna do most of the hunting, whereas males typically appropriate their meals from the female's kills. However, male lions are also adept hunters, and in some areas, they hunt frequently. Pride males in scrub or wooded habitats spend less time with the females and hunt most of their own meals. Nomadic males must always secure their own food. Though a group of hunting lions is potentially nature's most formidable predatory force on land, a high proportion of their hunts fail. The cats pay no attention to the wind's direction, which can carry their scent to their prey, and they tire after running short distances. Typically, they stalk prey from nearby cover and then burst forth to run it down in a short, rapid rush. After leaping on the prey, the lion lunges at its neck and bites until the animal has been strangled. Other members of the pride quickly crowd around to feed on the kill, usually fighting for access. Hunts are sometimes conducted in groups, with members of a pride encircling a herd or approaching it from opposite directions then closing in for the kill and the resulting panic. The cats typically gorge themselves and then rest for several days in its vicinity. An adult male can consume more than 34 kilograms or 75 pounds of meat in a single meal and rest for a week before resuming the hunt. If the prey is abundant, both sexes typically spend 21 to 22 hours a day resting, sleeping, or sitting and hunting for only two or three hours a day. The lion is the most dominant predator within its environment, meaning that other animals pose little or no threat to them, except for hyena packs that can cause fatal damages to lions, particularly when they are on their own and food is about. Lions are seen as a great threat by many other species, including both giraffes and elephants 
which are easily capable of fatally injuring a lion, to try to warn it off. More than other species, the significant threat to lions is other lions. In South Africa's Sabi Sands, a group of male lions formed a coalition that's believed to have killed more than 100 lions across a territory. Male lions will often kill one another while attempting to seize control of prides, and then will also kill cubs of prides to ensure a gene pool that's not theirs is passed on. As everyone knows, lions are extremely strong cats and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? Lions have famously acquired the title of King of the Jungle. However, the title is a little misleading, as lions don't actually live in jungles. This is a simple case of loss in translation. The word jungle has its roots in the Hindi word jangle, which means forest or wasteland. The latter could easily be applied to a savanna. Because lions are not suited to living in dense, humid rainforests, they avoid them in their native range in sub-Saharan Africa, preferring instead to live in savanna, open plains, and green or desert dry bushland. This is because lions preferred prey are large hoofed animals that roam the plains and savanna, such as buffalo, wildebeest, and zebra, and to hunt them effectively, they need wide open spaces. As they pursue their prey, a pride will plot out an attack strategy in formation. This type of hunting would be ineffective in the dense undergrowth of a tropical rainforest because the depth of field vision required to effectively hunt the type of prey that lions prefer is limited, and the Amazon contains very few large mammalian preys that lions would prefer to hunt anyway. The much heavier and bigger lions would have a difficult time catching the medium to smaller prey animals that are more common in Amazon jungles. As they quickly move through the undergrowth to areas where lions cannot see or reach them, the rainforest isn't known to be a habitat where lions live. There have been occasional sightings, but such lions are believed to be passing through. We don't believe that the prey animals or habitat of rainforests are conducive for permanent habitation by lions. Ever since King Kong first gave Fei Rei that unexpected lift to the top of the Empire State Building in 1933, Hollywood has gone ape, depicting the gorilla as perfect monster material. They seem to be forever typecast as the heavy. But the truth is, they're peaceful, family-oriented, plant-eating animals that live in complex social groups. They are the largest of all primates, the group of animals that includes monkeys, lemurs, orangutans, chimpanzees, and humans. No primate exceeds in size and magnificence to these animals. They are bigger than chimpanzees, orangutans, and gibbons. Therefore, they have the title of the largest primates in the world. Biologists recognize two species, the eastern gorilla and the western gorilla, each of which has two subspecies. All gorilla species are listed as endangered by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The Western Lowland Gorilla and the Cross River Gorilla, the two Western Gorilla subspecies, inhabit tropical rainforests in Cameroon, the Republic of the Congo, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. They also occur in a small portion of Nigeria, in the westernmost tip of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Eastern Gorillas, which include the Eastern Lowland Gorilla and the Mountain Gorilla, can be found along the eastern border of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Their range also includes parts of Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. The lowland subspecies live in rainforests, while the mountain species prefer higher elevation cloud forests. The largest of the great apes, gorillas are stocky animals with broad chests and shoulders, large human-like hands, and small eyes set into hairless faces. Though the two types are very similar, they have a few differences. For example, mountain gorillas tend to have longer hair, whereas lowland gorillas have short, soft hair. Another difference is size. Lowland gorillas are 4 to 6 feet, or 1.2 to 1.8 meters tall, and weigh 150 to 400 pounds, or 68 to 181 kilograms. Mountain gorillas are about the same height, though they tend to weigh a bit more. 
They are 4 to 6 feet tall and weigh 300 to 485 pounds or 135 to 220 kilograms. Gorillas possess thick chests with wide shoulders and an abdomen that is pushed forward. Adults have long, heavily muscled arms that they use to help propel themselves on their knuckles. Gorillas are covered in black fur except for their faces, hands, and feet. Older males also have bare chests. Adult males develop gray or silver hairs in a saddle pattern on their lower back, which is why mature males are often referred to as silverbacks. Gorillas are herbivores and therefore only eat fruit and leaves. They do not hunt or eat other animals, but occasionally feed on small insects and termites. Diet varies between species mainly due to the availability of certain foods in different habitats. Some gorilla species can consume over 200 species of plants and fruit. An adult gorilla is capable of consuming 18 to 20 kilograms of food every day. Gorillas are generally peaceful, shy, and amiable unless threatened. However, males will stand erect and beat their chest with their fists in an attempt to intimidate or show off their strength. They growl loudly and become very dangerous when annoyed or attacked. Gorillas also demonstrate aggression by charging towards perceived intruders. They rarely hit the intruder though. Instead, they rush past and may charge again. Gorillas band together in groups of 5 to 15 individuals. A typical group consists of one dominant male, many adult females with their young. In some cases, a smaller pack of less dominant males will associate on the periphery of this core group. The dominant male, sometimes known as a silverback because of the age-related graying hair on its back, remains dominant until another male displaces him from his position. Displaced silverbacks typically lead a solitary life. Fighting plays an important role in the group hierarchy. It is common that a newly dominant male, after displacing the former dominant male, is likely to kill the infants in the group, thus returning all lactating females prematurely to reproductive cycling. In doing this, a male increases his chance to produce offspring as his tenure as a dominant male is of unknown duration. To guard against potentially infanticidal males, a male's capacity to fight and ensure the survival of his progeny is unquestionably paramount to receptive females. Male gorillas are known to make a hooting sound as an alarm to all members of the group, each of whom becomes instantly alert. Groups may travel together for months and usually years at a time, but because of the abundance of food in the vicinity of their camps and their imposing size, little time and energy is typically devoted to travel. For these reasons, no terrestrial defense is exhibited and often ranges of neighboring groups overlap. Sadly, the greatest threat to these animals comes from humans. Exposure to disease, deforestation, trophy hunting, and even subsistence hunting to feed logging crews have all taken a terrible toll on the gorilla population. Since they share 98% of their DNA with humans, many of the diseases that affect our race are also faced by gorilla populations. That is why conservation efforts have focused on eliminating physical contact between humans and wild gorilla populations, as their immune systems can't handle the diseases that humans transmit. As everyone knows, gorillas are extremely strong animals and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? Assuming gorillas can eat Amazonian bamboo, which is an important part of the African gorilla diet, they may be able to survive. This also assumes that the various parasites, bugs, and diseases native to the Amazon that gorillas don't see in Africa would not kill the gorillas. The thing that would be the biggest challenge to gorillas in the Amazon, though, would be jaguars. The biggest predator a gorilla encounters in its African jungle is the leopard. And while it is a fearsome killer and a serious threat to young apes, poses no threat to any silverback. A big leopard goes to about 150 pounds, so a 450-pound bull gorilla would tear apart any leopard crazy enough to commit suicide by attacking it. Jaguars, on the other hand, can weigh up to 300 pounds and average around 250. They are extremely powerful predators that gorillas aren't used to dealing with. While a leopard kills an antelope by choking it with a neck bite, 
A jaguar kills tapers and domestic cattle by biting them right through their skulls. Gorillas, with their thick hides and very short necks, have no weak points from the point of view of a leopard, whereas every part of a gorilla would be vulnerable to the far more powerful jaguar and its incredibly strong jaws and teeth. The most powerful of the big cats, a jaguar could kill the world's largest bull gorilla if it could successfully stalk it. Gorillas just wouldn't be prepared for jaguars, so while they could possibly survive, they would not thrive in jaguar territory. Chimpanzees are humans' closest relatives and share nearly all of our DNA. Their bodies are covered with long black hair, but their faces, ears, hands, and feet are bare. They have hands with opposable thumbs that allow them to easily pick up and manipulate objects. They are intelligent and are one of the few species known to use tools. Chimpanzees normally walk on all fours, but occasionally walk upright for short distances. They are typically about 4.5 feet or 1.4 meters tall and weigh 55 to 110 pounds or 25 to 50 kilograms. Chimpanzees are found throughout 21 different countries in Western and Central Africa, where they are known to inhabit a variety of different regions from the tropical, humid rainforests to the drier and more arid regions of the savanna and open woodlands. They are excellent climbers and rely heavily on the surrounding trees not just for protection from predators, but also to find food and places to nest during the night. Chimpanzees live in communities that typically range from around 20 to more than 150 members, but spend most of their time traveling in small, temporary groups consisting of a few individuals, which may consist of any combination of age and sex classes. It was once thought that chimpanzees were exclusively vegetarian. In the early 1960s, a young Dr. Jane Goodall was the first person to document cooperative hunting among our closest living relatives while working in Gombe, Tanzania. She witnessed these wild apes working together to capture large animals for the consumption of their flesh. Her report sent shockwaves around the world, and people began to ponder the implications for our own evolution as humans. Chimpanzees are the only great apes known to engage in organized, communal hunts for larger animals. The creatures they target are usually always mammals. Some of these animals are hunted on the ground, whilst others are hunted in the treetops. Since the very first reports from Gombe, chimpanzee predatory behavior has been recorded at several other sites across the species' range. The total list of victims stretches to more than 30 different species and includes several types of monkeys, antelopes, flying squirrels, and tree pangolins. The most popular prey for chimpanzees at Gombe is red colobus monkeys. These monkeys make up to four-fifths of all their quarry. And of those red colobuses caught, about three-quarters are youngsters. The hunting party varies from a single chimpanzee to a few individuals to even more than 30 at a time. On average, 90% of the hunting parties are male chimpanzees, either full-grown or adolescents. Generally, the more individuals there are in a hunting party, the more successful it is likely to be with success rates in the biggest parties topping 90%. Sometimes, the hunters actively target and chase prey, while in other cases they gather around in mass after happening on a victim by chance. Division of labor during the hunt itself has been most studied among the Thai chimpanzees. Once the prey is targeted, it appears that some individual chimpanzees act as drivers to move it in the desired direction, while others are visible blockers cutting off potential escape routes. Along with the drivers and blockers are hidden ambushers and captors who initiate the kill. The complex coordination of hunting roles takes time to learn. Thai chimpanzees start learning at around the age of 10, and it takes as long as an additional 20 years to become experts. Successful hunters typically share some portion of their kill with other group members in response to a variety of begging behaviors. Meat is a favored food item among chimpanzees, but does not make up more than 2% of their overall diet. The chimpanzee has a few natural enemies. The biggest threat that they face is not from large predatory animals, but from humans. Habitat loss, which leads to interference with their reproduction and hunting for their meat, Although illegal, continues to take chimpanzees out of the wild so much so that they are listed as endangered species on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. They cannot defend themselves against human threats, 
but they can defend themselves quite well against natural enemies. They have been severely affected by the loss of much of their natural habitat, as forests are cleared to make way for agriculture or to cut down the trees as tropical timber. With groups being pushed into smaller and smaller ranges, the competition for food and nesting sites increases, and conflict can occur both between different groups and amongst individuals who reside in the same community. The decision to attack a troop of chimpanzees over territory that may offer an abundance of food depend more on the number of the chimps in the troop rather than the size of the individual chimpanzees. Though high up on the food chain, chimpanzees are prey to big cats, such as lions, cheetahs, and leopards, as well as crocodiles and pythons. Chimps will climb tall trees to escape a predator, but if that doesn't work, they can use their extraordinary strength and teeth. As you can see, chimpanzees are extremely strong animals and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? Chimpanzees are incredibly intelligent, but they are also highly adaptable and very, very cunning. You won't find a more aggressive, coordinated, dangerous animal than the male chimpanzee. They are not passive leaf eaters. If you put a troop of those animals in the Amazon rainforest, an environment that has no prior dealings with predators of this caliber, they will not just die off. Yes, there are individual chimps who aren't physiologically cut out for survival in a new landscape, but that's likely to happen regardless of the species you transplant. As for the remaining population, they would likely become highly aggressive, like a group of genetically edited killer bees. Except they aren't genetically edited, but they are free to roam about a habitat that possesses all of the necessary resources and zero competition. They would thrive, but the sloths, tapers, and capybaras they come into contact with won't. Not because the chimps would kill to eat, but because they would be so incredibly hostile as an expanding troop that they would likely drive off all other animals from their established territories. They would ravenously purge all fruit trees of their contents and likely spread some form of an ape pestilence through their diseases and bodily lice. However, part of surviving in a certain habitat is knowing what to eat. Plants and fruits in the Amazon would be completely foreign to chimpanzees. They would probably be able to distinguish fruits and test plants out of curiosity, but then a problem would occur if they were to eat poisonous fruits or plants. Another problem could be the other predators, but all of the predators in the Amazon have comparable counterparts in their home range in Africa. The jaguar's counterpart is, of course, the leopard. The anaconda's counterpart is the rock python and the caimans is the crocodile. In fact, they probably face more predation in Africa. The leopard is a medium-sized wildcat that is natively found in a variety of different habitats across sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. A member of the cat family, the leopard is an agile and opportunistic hunter that has been able to exploit habitats unused by other large felines as it spends a great deal of its time high in the tree branches. Seven different subspecies of leopard differ in their appearance and geographic location, with the African leopard being the most widespread, and the others being the rare Amur leopard, the Anatolian leopard, the Barbary leopard, the Sinai leopard, the South Arabian leopard, and the Zanzibar leopard. Although the African leopard populations are stable throughout much of their natural range, the story is different for the remaining subspecies that are often isolated and critically at risk. The Zanzibar leopard is actually now thought to be extinct. The leopard is an animal with a long and slender body that is supported by short, stocky legs and a long tail that is used to aid balance whilst in the trees. Leopards are incredibly strong and muscular animals and can pull themselves up trees using their legs and retractable claws. Like several other large feline species, the leopard can draw its claws into folds of skin on its paws to ensure that they are not blunted whilst the animal is walking about. Their keen hearing and sight, coupled with their long and very sensitive whiskers, mean that leopards are also incredibly well adapted for hunting under the cover of night. Leopards are not only the widest range of all big cats, but are actually one of the most adaptable and are found in a variety of different habitats, commonly found throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. 
There are also small and isolated populations of leopard inhabiting remote geographic locations in the Far East, Northern Africa, and Arabia. The leopard can be found inhabiting numerous different areas, providing that there is a good source of cover and an ample supply of food, including tropical rainforests, tree-lined savanna, barren deserts, and mountain highlands. One of the reasons why they are thought to still be surviving successfully throughout much of their natural range is that leopards have adapted to the growing presence of people and are known to both live and hunt in areas close to urban activity. However, in some parts of their natural range, populations are threatened by the loss of their natural habitats to both deforestation and growing settlements. The leopard is a solitary and nocturnal animal that hunts both on the ground and in the trees. They are excellent climbers and spend the vast majority of the daytime hours resting in the shade of the branches in the trees or under a sheltered rock. They are quite unique amongst large felines, as leopards rely heavily on being able to get close enough to their prey before ambushing it, rather than expelling vast amounts of energy in a high-speed chase. Once caught and killed, the prey is then dragged to safety, either into dense vegetation a couple of hundred meters away, or up a tree trunk and into the branches. Leopards are highly solitary animals that mark their territory using scent markings and by producing rough, rasping calls that are said to sound like sawing through coarse wood. Home range sizes vary depending on the habitat and the food available, but those of male leopards are significantly larger than those of their female counterparts, which often overlap the ranges of a number of both males and other females, sometimes by up to 40%. The leopard is a silent and opportunistic hunter that only hunts and kills other animals to survive. The leopards primarily hunt medium-sized mammals such as deer and warthogs, which are often ambushed from the branches above or dense vegetation just meters away. The leopard, however, also eats a wide variety of small prey including birds, reptiles, and rodents, even hunting dung beetles when larger animals are scarce. By eating much smaller and a wider variety of prey, Leopards can avoid intense competition for food from other large carnivores like tigers and hyenas, with which they share parts of their natural range. Since the leopard is a stealthy and apex predator throughout its natural environment, generally, the biggest threat to adult leopards is other leopards, along with the occasional lion or tiger that can get close enough. Young leopard cubs, however, are much more vulnerable and the fact that they have numerous natural predators leads them to remain hidden in dense vegetation for their first couple of months. Although, it is during the times when their mother is off hunting that leopard cubs are most at threat from hyenas, jackals, lions, tigers, snakes, and birds of prey. Despite their adaptability to differing surroundings, leopard populations in part of their natural range are declining due to both habitat loss to the timber industry and agriculture, and hunting by humans as trophies for their meat and fur. As you can see, leopards are great hunters and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in the Amazon rainforest? The Amazon rainforest is one of the most exotic and biologically diverse regions on Earth and is home to the most spectacular Amazon rainforest animals you can imagine. Legendary for the sheer vastness of its size, its 1.4 billion acres of tropical rainforest cover some 40% of the South American continent, making up just over half of the entire planet's remaining tropical rainforest lands. Given its enormity then, it's no surprise that the Amazon basin itself is home to some of the most diverse flora and fauna on the planet. In fact, there's no other biome in the world as rich in plant and animal life as the Amazon Basin. Roughly one out of every ten known animal species can be found in the Amazon rainforest. For birds, that figure rises to one out of every five. Specifically, the Amazon rainforest is home to 427 mammals, 78 reptiles, over 400 amphibians, and some 1,300 birds. The most fascinating part? 
These are only the species we know. Biologists estimate that we are still yet to discover the vast majority of Amazon rainforest animals that call this utopic wildlife repository home. Recent research even shows that, on average, a new Amazonian species is discovered every two days. The leopard might enjoy the fact that there aren't many other predators in South America to compete with it. The bigger problem here would be prey. The type of prey taken by the leopard is wholesale different from the jaguar, based on the geography where they are found, although both prefer ungulates. While leopards rarely chase prey, jaguars do so even more rarely. Leopards will cache a kill in trees, while jaguars don't. While leopards kill with a bite to the throat, the jaguar's stronger jaws permit it to kill by sinking its canines into the skull of its prey. Jaguars love swimming and will stalk prey that lives in water, such as crocodilians, as well as large constrictor reptiles. They are generalists supreme, eating just about anything. Many of these jaguar prey items would be unavailable to the leopard. Caimans, anacondas, and fish are off the menu because leopards don't swim, and the first two would also be dangerous. Tapers and horses are probably too big. This leaves the leopard with very small quantities of the medium-sized prey they would prefer, and a fair amount of smaller prey, which is not really their thing. If a leopard were to be introduced into a jaguar habitat, it would be expected that the leopard would be displaced by the jaguar, since the latter is more adapted to that environment. Size and strength would also work to the jaguar's advantage. It would also be possible for the two species to interbreed. Jagopards or Leguars. The range of the leopard would be restricted because of a lack of affinity for water. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.